Do you remember Farmville? <laughs> what if you could play Farmville and earn actual money for doing so? That's the idea behind Sunflower Land, the hot new crypto farming game built on the Polygon network. This is my farm, which I use to grow crops. I fend off the goblins to earn SFL tokens and to create rare NFTs to sell on OpenSea. SFL tokens, which you earn in the game, can be sold on the market or can be used in addition to in-game resources to craft NFTs that go for a pretty penny on OpenSea. Like this scarecrow, the foreman beaver, and the golden cauliflower, these NFT assets can sell for hundreds to even thousands of dollars. What is up, guys? My name is Bree, and in this video, I'm breaking down Sunflower Land and showing you how to get started playing and, most importantly, how to start earning while farming. I'll also be sharing my thoughts on whether or not this game is worth it in the short term, in the long term, and whether or not this game has potential to be big or not. So let's get into it. Okay, so there are three things you're gonna need to get started. And first is a MetaMask wallet set up with the Polygon network. Now you're gonna have to add the Polygon network yourself. Um, this is a really simple, quick process. So just search in YouTube for how to add Polygon network to MetaMask, find a video, follow the instructions, and you'll get it set up and you'll be ready to go for the next thing. And the second thing you need is some Matic token in your wallet. Matic is the native token of the Polygon network and Sunflower Land is built on Polygon. So you're gonna need some Matic in your wallet in order to pay for gas fees for any of the transactions that occur in the game. Now you're gonna need to buy some Matic on an exchange that allows you to withdraw to the Polygon network. I'm based here in Canada and I use Newton to buy my crypto. They do allow you to buy Matic and withdraw it to the Polygon network. So if you're in Canada as well, check them out. And just a quick plug here. If you sign up for Newton using my link in the description below, you'll get an extra $25 added to your account when you sign up and fund your account with at least $100. So you've got a wallet, you've got some Matic. The third thing you're gonna need is an NFT farm. So let's talk about how you can get one of those. Now there are two ways you can get an NFT farm for Sunflower Land. The first and the cheapest is to mint one for 10 Matic whenever there's a public drop of new farms. Now at the moment, Matic is about 70 cents right now. So it'll cost you about $7 to buy a farm by using this method. And you can do that by going over to sunflower-land.com and follow the instructions to mint a farm if you haven't started one already. Now there is a limit to one farm per wallet and they are cracking down on this. I don't know how exactly they're finding out if you have more than one farm, but to keep it safe, just go with one. Now they do release batches of new farms occasionally. I think a couple of weeks ago, they just released another 20,000, I believe. So this is your quickest and cheapest way to get in. But otherwise your second option is to get one off of OpenSea. Now, if you go over here to the official Sunflower Land collection on OpenSea, there's two collections. There's one for in-game items and there's also one for farms. And if I scroll down here for farms, you're gonna see, first of all, that all the cheapest ones are banned and you wanna avoid those. So to make sure you get a good farm that is in working order, you wanna go down on the filters here, go to status, and we wanna click on active. There's also, we also have unverified farms, which are gray and you don't wanna go with those ones. Um, I'm not gonna get into that, the reason why, but we also wanna avoid these red banned ones. So you do wanna make sure you click on active and you choose a farm that looks normal. It's not banned or being verified. So right now the cheapest farm is 0.0036 ETH. So yeah, about $7, which is kind of around what they're minting for at the moment. Before you buy anything, you do want to check out the farm first and make sure there's nothing wrong. Um, some Sometimes it can take a while for the metadata to update, I believe. So you don't want to end up buying one that looks fine, but it's actually banned. So in order to do that, scroll down here in the description and there is a link to the farm and you can go and visit it. So here is that farm. It looks good. You can take a look around and see what has been done with it. There's like 0.01 SFL. Some of these will have some tokens already in them. Um, this one has some sunflowers planted. Some of the fields have been unlocked. So that one would be good to go. This would be a safe one to buy. Um, you'll also notice back here in OpenSea that the price is a purple ETH icon and that means it's ETH on Polygon. So this is ETH that has been bridged over to the Polygon network. You're not gonna be buying this with ETH on the Ethereum chain. So in order to do that, you're going to have to either bridge over some ETH to Polygon, which can be expensive because gas fees on ETH are usually pretty crazy, or alternatively, 
basically what I did was I sent enough Matic over to my Polygon wallet in MetaMask, and then I went over to QuickSwap. And from QuickSwap, you can choose to swap some Matic and go down and select, you want some ETH. Transfer over enough Matic so you have enough ETH to buy a farm and you're ready to go. You can go and buy that from OpenSea. Okay, so let's head on over to my farm and I'll show you what gameplay is like. And you will need to connect your wallet and sign just to connect and let's farm. So here is my farm. I have planted some cauliflower overnight. So what I'm gonna do is first is I'm going to harvest those. So just click on those. So, okay, I've harvested all those cauliflower. I'm gonna go over here to the shop and there's a buy and sell tab. Let's go to sell and let's sell all of those cauliflowers. I made 2.45 SFL. So if I wanna go and buy some new seeds to plant, all the seeds have different times that they take to grow. So we can see here, we have sunflower seeds that take one minute, potatoes take five, pumpkins take 30 minutes, carrots take an hour, we have two hours, four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, and 24 for radish and wheat. What makes the most sense to plant? Now, the most efficient one is to plant the sunflower seeds and they get less efficient over time, but they get more valuable. So when I sell a radish, I get 0.249 SFL, but that takes 24 hours. One sunflower, I sell 4.000525, but that takes a minute. Technically, if I am planting and harvesting sunflowers every minute, I'm going to make more in a 24 hour period than I would planting radishes and harvesting at one time. So it is definitely a balance of planting what makes sense for you during the day. So what I'll normally do is I will plant either cauliflower or parsnips overnight. So that's eight or 12 hours, depending on what time I'm getting up and what I have going on. During the day, while I'm working on my computer, I'll normally be planting pumpkin seeds or carrot seeds. I set a timer on my phone to check back every half hour or hour, and then I come harvest my crops and replant. If I'm a little bit more busy, I'm out of, I'm away from my computer for a bit, I might do cabbages for two hours or beetroots for four hours and come back when I get a chance and harvest and replant those. I don't normally do sunflowers or potatoes very often because sitting here watching them grow and harvesting every minute or five minutes just isn't exactly my idea of fun. I have better things to do. Um, so let's go and we'll buy up. We have enough space for 22. So let's plant some pumpkins and come back in half an hour and we'll harvest those. So from over here and your items, you can see what you have, your seeds, your resources, the crops that you haven't sold, and you have NFT collectibles. We'll get into that in a minute. But as I have my pumpkin seeds selected, plant those and I can either sit here and watch them grow, which I'm not gonna do, or come back in half an hour and harvest those and sell and repeat the process. It's pretty simple, pretty passive game. That's what's involved. Now, what are the goals you are working towards? That depends. Now, first of all, you have, you see all these goblins here, they all have little snacks, and those are things that I have created to unlock new things. Now, if you're starting from a brand new farm, some of these fields are going to be locked. You're not gonna have access to all of them, and you're gonna have to feed them their favorite snack in order to unlock different things things. So what I just did most recently is I gave this guy a radish pie and that unlocked wheat. So now I can plant and grow wheat. And to do that, you can go over here to the kitchen and you'll see, I forget how much these cost, but you're going to say for the pumpkin soup, you're going to have to collect up enough pumpkins and some SFL in order to craft that. And once you craft that, then you unlock whatever it says. So main thing with this game, you're going to be planting and growing crops, harvesting, and you're going to be getting SFL in return. So what are you going to use all that for? You're going to be using that to unlock things or you're going to be creating tools or nfts so there's other resources here as well so if i go here to craft i can craft an axe that lets me collect wood and i can go down here to this wood section and i can wood I get five wood for that the next tool is a pickaxe and I need two wood and one SFL and that's going to let me collect stone so I can go over here onto this rock and mine that for stone the next one up you're gonna need some stone and wood and SFL to get the stone pickaxe which lets you collect iron and then you're gonna need that to make the next pickaxe which lets you collect gold and those are all distributed around the farm where you go and mine those things so these what do you use these resources for well we're gonna need to go over to the goblin town and just a note here if you go over to the goblin town and you purchase anything or craft anything like an NFT, you do want to make sure you sync your game to the blockchain before you do that. Or you're going to lose progress, but just to go and look, this doesn't matter. So we're going to continue. So over in the goblin town, I can check the farmer or the crafting station or the tailor to see what I can make. So here we have 
some rare NFTs that I can build a chicken coop that costs 100 wood, 50 gold, 2,000 eggs, and 50 SFL. And that will let me collect three times the amount of eggs from my chickens, which haven't been unlocked yet, so we're not gonna do that. I really recommend that you pick something that you want to work towards and then work towards that. So my next goal is to craft a Nancy Scarecrow, and this is gonna keep crows away and help my crops grow 15% faster. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna be saving up 100 wheat, 50 wood, and 10 SFL, and once I have that, I can craft it and it'll be three days and I'll have minted a new Nancy Scarecrow NFT. Now, any of these, you can click on the OpenSea button and go and see what price they're going for at the moment. Now, Nancy's only about $8 right now, but some of these are actually very expensive. So if we look at the golden cauliflower, let's take a look at that. That's 400 bucks. So if you can create that and you don't wanna use it in the game, you can sell that and make a nice chunk of change. But also under crafting, there's some interesting things here as well. Some of the most popular things to craft are the beavers. We have the woody beaver, apprentice beaver, and the foreman beaver. And the woody beaver is gonna take 200 wood, 50 SFL to craft. So for that reason, you're gonna be growing crops to generate SFL and using that to create access to get enough wood and then saving up the rest of the SFL in order to have enough to create this beaver NFT. And that will increase your wood drops by 20%. And then they upgrade on top of each other to be better bonuses, but they also are more expensive. This foreman beaver is over a thousand dollars on OpenSea. But you can tell why the price is so high because this is going to take a lot of resources and a lot of time to do that. But the goal with this game basically is to choose the thing that you want to work towards next and start grinding towards achieving that. If you do wanna go craft something or buy something from the Goblin Town, you're going to need to sync your farm to the blockchain. So let's do that now. You'll also notice when you're buying seeds, there's so many in stock. I have almost run out of pumpkin seeds and I'm out of carrot seeds. So for that reason, I'm also going to need to sync to the blockchain to restock the shop. And as I said, if you're going to craft or buy anything from the Goblin Town, then you're gonna to need to sync beforehand as well. So in order to do that, let's go to menu. Let's sync on chain. I'm not a robot. It's going to prompt me to sign a transaction through my MetaMask. Now this does cost gas fees. Since it's on Polygon, it's not very much. So it's like, you know, 0.01 Matic, which is like a fraction of a cent. So we're going to confirm that. And sometimes this can take a little while just depending um, on what the network congestion is. But okay, so we have success. I My items are secured on the blockchain. I'm going to go continue. And if I go on over to the shop, we're going to see now this is all restocked. There's 100 carrot seeds. Everything's restocked again, and I'm ready to continue farming. Now this part is really important because the tokenomics are important to the long-term success of this game. And there's a few things I wanna to touch on here. The biggest is how Sunflower Land has decided to tackle the problem that shows up in all P2E games where we have runaway inflation, where you have a game where all the actions end up creating more of the token, in this case, SFL, and there's not enough sinks of SFL where the token gets burned, which means eventually more and more and more SFL gets minted, which means there's more supply then there is demand, which means the price tanks. And when the price tanks, there's no incentive for people to play because they're not earning anything and the game dies. So how Sunflower Land has decided to tackle this is that they have implemented a halvening every 10 million SFL tokens. So if you look at their halvening chart from the white paper, we're currently at the less than 20 million SFL stage where each sunflower sells for 0.000525 SFL. And once we get over 20 million, then that's going to have again. So basically every time another 10 million SFL tokens are created, then we have the price of a lot of things in the game. So the cost of seeds will be half, but the amount that you earn from the crops that you grow will also be half. Cost of tools will have as well, but this does not apply to a lot of the in-game crafted items that sell for a lot on OpenSea. So this means the rare NFTs that people actually want, whether to play the game with or to sell, become further and further out of reach the farther we go on the game's timeline. So right now the Woody Beaver costs 50 SFL in addition to some resources to craft. And right now, depending on how I'm playing the game, that might take me a couple of weeks to earn that much to buy it. But once we've gone through a couple more halvenings, that could take you months to be able to afford that much to create a single NFT. And that is the biggest thing that worries me with this game is because things are just going to get harder and harder to achieve. And this isn't really very incentivizing for players to keep playing the game. If you know things are just gonna keep getting harder and it's not that much fun, your payoff is 
0.00001 SFL per crop that you harvest, then that's not really a fun game mechanic. So what do you think? Is there something I'm missing here that shows that this is going to be good long-term or are you skeptical as well? And that brings us to the big question, is Sunflower Land worth it? And it depends on what you're trying to get out of this game. Are you going to get rich playing Sunflower Land? Mm, probably not. There is some potential to earn through selling NFTs with this game. And if it gets really popular, the price of SFL could go up and it could be worth it that way. But it does take a long time to earn a significant amount of SFL and it takes a longer time to craft any of the rare NFTs. So your chances of making a lot of money from this are not super high. That being said, this game is super new. We are super early, it's still in beta, and there's a ton of features and things that the team is working on that have not been rolled out yet. So we haven't even unlocked chickens or animal farming yet. So we don't really know where that's going, what utility that's gonna have in the game, and it might add some more layers to the game to make it more fun, even if you're not looking at it from an earnings perspective. But if you do look at this, at an earnings perspective, then if the game is more fun, there's more things to do, there's gonna be more demand for the tokens, for the NFTs, which will drive the prices up. So it could be worth it, or it could crash and die and go to nothing and your NFTs are worthless. So it could really go either way. But overall, I do find this a chill passive game to play in the background. I spend most of my day working on my computer anyway, so I just set a few timers, go over to my farm, harvest some crops, replant, and it's just a fun little mechanism to work on my farm in the background throughout the day. So I'm working to build out my farm. I just unlocked wheat. Chickens are still locked at this point, but when those come out, I'm definitely gonna be getting some chickens to see where that goes. But I do think crypto gaming is going to be the next big thing. And there's lots of projects out there, people trying out different ways to run crypto games. And I am really excited to see where this goes. And I will be along for the ride for the next little while at the very least. So I'm curious to hear what are your opinions on this? Do you think Sunflower Land has potential or do you think it's not really going anywhere? I'm really curious to hear what you guys think. If you're new to crypto and you're interested in learning how to become a confident crypto investor, then I cannot recommend enough my free course, the Crypto Basics Bootcamp. This is perfect for you if you want to skip past all the confusion, all of the BS that crops up in the crypto space and learn the basics in the most straightforward manner possible so you can be comfortable with the tech, with how everything works in the space so you can get started and get involved. You can sign up for that at the link in the description below. But that is it for this video, guys. So I just wanna thank you for watching, for sticking it out till the end. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share it with a friend. It is truly the best way to help support me in supporting you by creating more videos for you guys. But otherwise, if you're ready to continue on down the crypto rabbit hole, make sure you check out one of these videos next and I will see you guys next time.